many orange, fraud prevention. With increasing, user mobility and more ways to access corporate applications and data. Users are getting more prone to internet frauds and scams, which have become a common practice in our society. It's becoming a fast-growing area, where victims are tricked to exposing their sensitive information like credit card details or transaction passwords. The real reason for the growth of such cyber crime is that these methods are completely anonymous, untraceable or, getting the knowledge of the transaction is very difficult, leading to the exploitation of the Internet. Trying not to become a statistic, many users, today, access security with more intelligent controls to avoid, business risk, and, authorizing access to important or critical data. Fraud Prevention Solutions Can help users and organizations, uncover fraud and take action before damages and loss occur. But many traditional fraud prevention environments, use static credential details like, group, and profile attributes to make a policy decision. Whereas, many orange fraud prevention, takes it to the next level. It complements the existing traditional access controls by using contextual elements, to allow for a more dynamic policy decision. Contextual elements, here, refer to, device, location, time of access, and, user behavior. These elements, are used to calculate risk score, or, confidence level, for the current user's transaction. The risk or confidence level is used as input into the final policy decision. This risk score becomes like a second factor in authentication, the first factor being, passwords or any another normal form. The risk score can also be used to determine if further information is needed from the end user to complete the transaction. Fraud prevention uses both device fingerprints and behavioral data to come up with a risk score, based on which you either permit or deny access. Device fingerprints constitute of any information that can be collected about a device remotely that is over HTTP or other means. Some of the identifying factors that can be used are IP address, operating system patch, browser version, and many more. Whereas the time of access, frequency of access and type of transaction, are some parameters which can be used for behavioral analysis. So. How exactly does many orange fraud prevention works? Users access the apps via the point of contact where they are identified as the custom or the third party apps. Then, many orange authentication service accesses information from your AD, LDAP, or database. As the application being accessed is a protected application, the many orange risk-based access service is invoked. Where the risk engine will evaluate user and device attributes. The risk score is calculated where the location, device type, transaction amount are examined and. The security policy will approve access, or drive additional validation that is the second factor authentication based on risk score. Access point of contact or application will execute access decision as permit or deny access. Next, let's come to Mini Orange API. You can find the detailed information about it on our website's fraud prevention product page, and on the dashboard of our product. There are two parts to it. First, REST APIs. Package contains various JavaScript files that you will need to import in your web pages from where you like to call many Orange APIs. Second, there are four fraud prevention APIs that you need to call, which includes JavaScript files that make these calls, 
the four types of APIs are Is user registered? Register user Evaluate risk or challenge And Validate challenge The details of the API along with code snippets are also provided. Now we will show a demo of our product Mini Orange Fraud Prevention. Let's log in using your daily usual office laptop for the first time. Log in using your end user credentials. As the user logs in for the first time, he will be challenged using OTP over SMS. Type in the received OTP. Check on registered profile to register the device, give the device a name. Validate the OTP, and you will be logged into your dashboard. Select registered profile, and you can see that the device has been added to the list. Next when you log in from the same device in the same environment, you will not be challenged, as it is now a known device. If device moves to a different network then it should cause higher risk, resulting obligation, hence same procedure will be followed if the user logs in from a different device and different environment. This policy prevents your device and data to be used by unauthorized users. Let's say you log in from your home PC. As soon as you log in using your credentials, you will be challenged. Follow the same procedure as before to register your device. The device gets added to the list. Now and no obligation will be thrown further. Now let's test our location-based policy, if the user logs in from a registered location, let's say, your office, no obligations will be thrown. But when the user tries to access the account from a different location, let's say, your house, a challenge is thrown which will be in the form of second factor providing an extra wall of protection to your data. As the user logs in from different location, a new entry gets into the list of registered profiles. Next is the time-based policy, suppose the user regularly logins between the 10 am to 6 pm which is during office hours. That is the same environment as usual, he will not be challenged and allowed to log in. But due to an urgent meeting the next day, the user has to work late night. When the user logs in after 6 pm, a secondary challenge is always thrown, preventing the illegal authorization of the critical data. Since there's a change in attribute that is time of access, therefore, Another profile gets added to the list. In case, you don't want to register your device, location, or time of access, you need not click on the link, register this profile. Letting a challenge to be thrown every time someone logs in. Let's see what happens when an unauthorized user tries to log in. Suppose a hacker logs into your mini orange account, the person will be challenged at every level making it difficult to enter into the account. Therefore a safer environment to work in. Now, let's see how easy it is to configure it. First, log in as an admin in mini orange self-service console. Select Fraud Prevention from sidebar, and click on Basic Policy Configuration. 
To add a new policy for fraud prevention, click on Add Policy tab. Enter the policy name. You can configure location, by allowing or restricting end user's login. Check, allow all locations if you want to allow all locations or you can allow or deny some specific cities to have access or restriction to log into Mini Orange self-service. Location of an end user can be registered by clicking on the checkbox against register location if user completes challenge. Now if the end user logs in from an unregistered location, or logs in from a location which is not allowed, a challenge is thrown or denied access to login. You can add multiple locations where you can allow or deny access and, also in and around the city. In time of access configuration, you can restrict the access for end users by selecting time interval in which end user is allowed to log in. Selecting, allow at all times, will allow the user to log in without any restriction and for, register time if user completes challenge, you can allow all times or you can allow or deny time interval to have access or restriction to log in to Mini Orange self-service console. Suppose time of access set up by admin is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., in which login is allowed. Now if an end user tries to log into his account before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m., then access is denied to login or challenge will be thrown. We also provide a feature, where the users can log in into their accounts within a specified allowed time difference. Next for device configuration. The end user's profile is stored. When policy for a device is enabled, the end user's device will be matched to the previously registered device for that user. The end user is also given an option of adding new devices. Now, you can set what happens when the behavior of the end user changes. Behavior change can either be device, location, or time change where you can either allow deny access or challenge the user. In case you choose to challenge the user, you can select the challenge type from the three options. KBA, Security Questions, OTP over Alternate Email, User Second Factor that is Second Factor configured for the individual end user. Save the settings. You can now see the policy has been configured successfully. Now let's see how to turn on fraud prevention for a group. For that, navigate to Policy tab and select App Authentication Policy. Select the group for which you want to enable fraud prevention. Here we will select Self-Service Console. You can also apply fraud prevention with any other apps like Google Apps, Salesforce, Office 365 and many other. For this demo we will select Self-Service Console. Click on the Edit link. Check the Enable Fraud Prevention checkbox. Select any number of types of configurations, here we are selecting all three, that are Device ID, Location, and Time of Access, then, Select the type of fraud prevention policy. Finally, click on the update button to save your settings. If there is any change in the user behavior, like on transaction based policy, or any other policy, the user is challenged or can access or deny permission as set in its policy configuration. Making many orange fraud prevention, dynamic and comprehensive solutions. Many orange also has a provision to add your own attributes and its equivalent risk weightage. Adding another feature to many orange fraud prevention. For more information, you can check out our product page on the website. 
or submit your query with us, and we will make sure to contact you back. Thank you for choosing Mini Orange. For any support go to miniorange.com or mail us at info at miniorange.com.